Hey guys, what's up? It's Bigger Notation here, and uh, today I'm going to be bringing you a little gameplay of um, the Yellow Sun Shenron aggro deck that I've been playing recently. I've been really enjoying. Um, the reason that I haven't done a deck profile on this deck in particular is because um, the deck list is actually from my good friend over on Scrub Games channel. So I'll have the link for the deck profile in the description, but I didn't want to like just take his deck card for card and post a video of it on my channel because I felt like that would be a bit uh, kind of not it didn't feel very good you know um, didn't feel very like real and honest um, I don't want to just like steal people's ideas on this channel that's not what I'm about but um, I've actually had the privilege of being able to play in some online locals um, recently my locals have set up some online uh, events using Untap and so I've been able to play in them over the last few weeks, which has been really nice. Uh, just being able to test out new decks and stuff. It's going to be especially good fun when we get the last of the set 13 reveals, and so we can all play a load of set 13 decks and try out what we want to play uh, for the next set. So for my first game, I'm against a Green Gohan deck, and my opponent is Son of Paragus. Uh, he's actually a good friend. I know him personally, as with most of the people in this tournament, because it's my locals. So they who I hang out with regularly when it comes to playing cards. Um, but he's actually got a Twitch channel under Son of Paragus 420. Um, definitely check him out. He plays a variety of games, including like Call of Duty uh, and things of that sort. Um, but I'll have the link to his Twitch channel in the description. Be sure to check it out. And whilst we're on the topic, of course, I've actually recently set up my own Twitch channel, um, which I'll also have the link to in the description. But um, here we do like League of Legends streams, like it's, you, you can see here, um, and some also some Dragon Ball streams as well. So for those of you more interested in Dragon Ball, you can check that out. But also for people who play a little bit of League at the same time, um, check it out as well. We do a variety of both. And as you can see, I've actually got a webcam now. I've been using a different webcam on the stream because I use um, the main computer downstairs. But um, on my laptop, I've also got a webcam, which is why you can see my uh, beautiful face during this video, and hopefully in some future videos to come. So um, we'll get right into the gameplay and load it up. So we're against the Green Gohan leader, and as almost everyone should know by now, the Green Gohan leader is looking to just kill you by turn two, occasionally by turn three if you get a really bad hand. But it's mostly just a turn two kill deck. And because our local format is best of three, um, Green Gohan is actually legal because obviously in best of one the deck is so um, unfun to play against that it's been banned in best of one because it's just kind of you play out two turns during your best of one and you don't get the opportunity to side deck in extra negates or anything like that. Um, so he's actually able to play the Green Gohan leader because of the format of the locals. Um, so that's all fine, and he actually won the die roll, so that means he's going first, which means I'm basically going to have one turn to attempt to set up some kind of board or try and survive or stall him out. Um, and this is actually one of my first times playing against the Green Gohan deck, so I wasn't entirely expecting it to explode the way that it did. Obviously I've heard a lot of things about it, because I've heard a lot of my um, fellow teammates or card game players that I know play it, um, complaining about the deck because it's very unfun and uninteractive. I didn't actually know properly what it did um, because I've not played against it very much. Um, most of the people in our locals have like a set deck or theme that they stick to so Green Gohan doesn't really crop up all that much. Um, and so I wasn't really expecting it to explode in the way that it did like I said before. Um, but, so what I'm doing here is I'm just setting up my one star ball because going into the Sin Shenron chain seems like a good idea for this uh, matchup because it will just kind of give me that extra defensive capabilities with the blockers and stuff like that. Um, and so that's my reason for going into the one star rather than any of the others. Um, he's just swinging with his leader and I'm taking the damage because I want to build up a big hand as soon as I can really. Even if it gets me to lower HP or lower life, um, it seems like the best play at the moment. Um, 
The reason that I swung on his leader with my leader was to get the extra card off of my leader's effect, um, but also it was just me underestimating the deck as well. I didn't realise that that one attack could actually impact the game so much because I didn't think that he'd be able to self-awaken himself turn two. Um, so here he's swinging with Dodoria and he actually attempted to use Feet Kamehameha on it. Um, that was a misplay on his part. I think it's his first time playing the deck, so he's just getting used. He hadn't like properly read through the cards and stuff. He was just getting used to what everything did. Um, but I managed to catch that, and I told him that you can only use that on the leader. Um, so he throws in a super combo, which is really annoying for me because um, although my hand is eight cards, I want to be getting those extra life to my hand before I'm having to get rid of more cards. But luckily for me, I've managed to draw all four of my super combos here, which is really, really um, good for me. Like that's exactly what you want to be seeing against Green Gohan. And something that's really frustrating about this matchup is that uh, because my deck is much more aggressive than most Sin Shenron decks, it doesn't actually run any negates. Like, it doesn't run Time Magic or Flying Nimbus or anything like that. Um, no hard negates like that. It just runs the Sin Shenron line in which it's... Um, kind of negating stuff with blockers and things like that. So he drops a Cells Earth Destroying Kamehameha, so I shuffle up my hand and he actually hits out um, one of my super combos, which is really frustrating for me, but because I've already got three in hand, I'm not too worried about it. It was just under a 50% chance for him to hit that because I had four in hand in here, and I had uh, nine total cards in hand, so four over nine would be um, like just under 50% basically. And so he swings with his crit attacker and then boosts it up to 30k with both the cells and the Gohan effect. And then that takes me down to 3 life because I'm obviously going to take that. I can't. I don't want to combo all the way up when he still has an energy open so he can still play down cards. Uh, so he awakens to get the energy open as I mentioned before. And then he actually restands and just goes all in on this triple strike swing um, because I'm at 3 life and so he's just going all in. Um, I think something that he could have done was kept his leader, um, kept the second leader attack for later so that he could have had tr two triple strike swings and that potentially could have won him the game here. Um, although I actually have quite a lot of combo power as you'll see in a minute. So he's just full comboing in. Um, I don't remember how much it added up to but here it's 25, so 40, 50 from the Kai, 60 from the Super Combo, 70, 80, so it looks like a total of 91,000 power uh, on his part. So I just immediately awaken because I've hit 3 life. So one and frustrating thing about this matchup is that I want to be getting to 3 life because I want to be awakening very quickly. Um, but he wants to get me to 3 life because he wants to triple strike me down. So here I go up to 35. Uh, immediately with two super combos and then go back up to 45 and here I bottom deck the 9 drop sin because um, I only have one energy open and so it means that the rest of my hand will all be 5k's except for the one which I need the one energy for. So I'm immediately going up to um, 45k power and I've only just used all my super combos so that's 55, 65, and he's on 91, so 70, and then 80, and as you can see, I had um, definitely enough combo power. I actually had 10k spare left over. Um, but if he'd if he'd kept the second leader attack and saved it as a triple striker, I would have been 5k off of killing him, uh, or not of killing him, but of surviving the turn and then winning the game through his leader's effect. And so because he's uh, used his leader effect there um, to restand his leader, I actually win the game just automatically. And that kind of sucks, and we were both talking about it because it's his first time playing the deck here, and like, I kind of thought it would be a bit more interactive than that. Like um, He actually felt like he, a bit bored playing the deck, he mentioned. Um, but that first game, luckily I managed to win it, even though I'd underestimated the aggression of the deck. And so here in the second game, I'm like, right, I need to definitely make sure that I'm digging for super combos. So I just throw back my entire hand um, because I know that the only reason that I won that game was because I managed to draw all four super combos. And so I knew that I'd only gotten lucky that game. I hadn't properly played it perfectly, I wouldn't say. 
Um, so I end up just tossing my whole hand back in search for the super combos, and I don't manage to get any, which sucks. But I still have the turn 1 play of the Ice Shenron, so I can go into a ball on turn 1. And I draw my secret rare, and to me that's um, not amazing because of... Uh, it's basically just going to be 10k combo power when I, for after I awaken. I, it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to get to my turn 2 or turn 3 and be able to drop the secret rare like the deck intends to do, um, because of the pure aggression that Gohan offers. So here I just use the Ice Genron to bring out a ball, and notice that it's very important that I did that before using the uh, Oceanus Genron, because I don't want to necessarily get another ball off of the top 5 of the Oceanus Genron, uh, because as my friend on Scrub Game says, deck thinning is deck winning. Um, so it's very important to bring out your balls before searching the top 5 uh, and as with any kind of search effects it's very important the order that you do them because it can increase small percentage chances that are actually really important when it comes to card games. So here he's just swinging with his Gohan and I'm going to let it go. I don't want to um, particularly defend any of my life until I get to uh, pretty close to an awakening stage because I either want to defend at 4 life so that he can't triple strike me down and then self awaken the turn after and um, try and kill him with that turn or just let him take me to 3 life and then try and out combo him if I think I have the hand advantage um, so here he's managed to take me to 5 life without using any of his leader swings and that's actually uh, really dangerous for me because if he has one more self awakener he can um, take himself down to 3 life and awaken and just kill me basically but he, he decides to only take one life uh, with his leader swing, which signals to me that he doesn't have the second self-awakener. And that means that I'm actually going to get a turn two, unlike in the last game, which is um, really good for me. And I think that could have been a slight misplay on his part, honestly. Um, going for the two life play would have probably been a bit better, just because the amount of self-awakeners you run in the deck is... Um, like, you run something like 16 in the deck. So he actually had a pretty good chance of getting a self awaken off of the two life, um, and so opting to do that was probably slightly better than his uh, line of play. So here I have two energy, and I'm just trying to figure out what I can do, because I don't know whether I want to just clear his board and gain as much advantage as I can uh, in order to um, try and defend against his next turn, and I don't know if I want to try and set up some kind of uh, Sin Shanron line with the one star ball uh, to try and defend or if I want to just try and kill him and I end up opting to try and kill him because my reasoning for this is because I don't have a 9 drops in Shenron in hand so I don't have the blocker revenge and a massive mistake that I make in this game is completely forgetting about the 4 drops in Shenron auto um, I'm actually pretty new to the deck so that's my excuse but it's still uh, it's a massive lesson that I learned from this game, and I'm just going to bear it in mind from now on because of this match. Um, but the 4 drops in Shenron has an auto of when it comes into play. You can choose up to one of your opponent's leader cards in rest mode, or one of their battle cards with cost 4 or less in rest mode, and that card can't attack the next turn. And that card is actually, uh, this 4 drops in Shenron is massive against Green Gohan, because obviously they're going to be attacking with their leader, so it's going to be in rest mode and then you can stop their leader from attacking the next turn. Um, but something to watch out for is, I believe that um, if your opponent awakens, uh, it considers it a new card, so the effect drops off it for the, so the leader can still attack. Um, but in this case you would have needed two self-awakeners, and I learned from the last turn that it was very, very unlikely that he had one. So going for the 4 drops in Shenron from the ball would have actually been a pretty good play, I think. But here I'm going for the aggressive play, and like I mentioned before, and I'm just uh, thinning through my deck. I got the Awaken off, and I decided to warp out. I believe I warped out the Haze Shenron, the critical, um, from the Omega Shenron. Uh, that was mostly just to take the life so that I could have access to my Awaken. Um, but also the critical was the best offensive option that I had in the drop at the time because I didn't really have any cards in the drop that were good targets. So I just opt to swing at his leader I believe for 30k critical 
and it's just nice because it will deny him a card um, and I get uh, one of his life down and getting through a green Gohan's life is very important because if they're at one life they can't use their um, leader effect to give triple strike because they have to crit a life and I managed to crit away a Supreme Kai of Time the uh, pseudo super combo for the deck and that's really massive because that's effectively 10k combo power that I've denied him and here I use Nuova Shenron to um, bring out an Ice Shenron just for some small advantage, give me another attacker. And I swing down at his Dodoria because what I'm thinking is I've got four and I've got eight, four and I've got eight on the board, uh, and that makes 12. So I can go for the turn two Cell Xeno play and try and kill him through four life. And that's what I end up doing. So I swing with the Cell Xeno and I opt to combo a little bit in there, but not. Uh, a massive amount and the reason that I don't combo in like full combo is because I still have a um, I still want to maintain some sort of a hand advantage um, against him just in case he has the specific card that I was worried about was the green 8 SCR the one that you can remove from the combo area to um, to basically stop an attack and kill, or not to stop an attack, but to kill a, a, a card through barrier, I believe. Um, so I combo most of my hand into it, but not the entire hand. Um, and he ends up actually having the Great Ape Marseille, so he's able to warp out or kill my uh, Cell Xena, which sucks, because that's basically a uh, game for him. But, like, There's no way I can come back from that, I've put my entire hand into that attack and I just had to hope that I could um, get it off, which I ended up not being able to. Um, so here I'm just looking through my options to see if I can really do anything, but I can't really in the end. Um, and I believe what I end up doing is just swinging with the Ice Shenron on his newfound power son Gohan, just to give me some kind of chance of surviving. And basically my only hope is that he doesn't have... Um, well... I don't really have a, any kind of hope here because even if he doesn't have a self awakening he can just swing with his leader to get him to 3 life and then um, try and crit me down, uh, not crit me down but use his triple striker to kill me. And he'll have a potential 3 triple strike attacks I believe because he can swing, take the life and then awaken on the first attack and then his leader will restand, he can swing on the second attack and then restand for the final attack on his backside. So um, I give my Omega Shenron barrier and blocker, and my hope is that I can use Oceanus to restand it, uh, and then block two leader attacks, and then use the Krillin super combo and or any kind of life points that I might take, and try and hope that I draw into a second Oceanus in the hope that I can block all three leader swings if he goes for the um, last effect of his leader, and I managed to draw an Oceanus off of the top of my life, which is perfect, that's just what I wanted. But it does leave me at one life because he had Dodoria, which is awful for me because I was really hoping that of any self awakeness he would have, it would not be that one, because that means that any card that he plays uh, can potentially kill me. So I combo Oceanus to restand, um, and He's now at 2 life, but he's able to awaken, and this is looking pretty hopeless for me because he's got the massive hand advantage, and he's still got 2 more swings from his leader, and he can play any of his battle cards and just free combo in, and I will pretty much lose. Um, so what he goes ahead and does, is I believe he has the Bardock Overrealm here. Um, First he swings with his leader in fact, and so I just decide to block it again. And he's actually able to crit himself down one more to leave him at one life, and that will put triple strike and plus 10k on his leader for the turn, um, making him 25k. And he then uses the Android 18 super combo to combo up to 35k and then 40k with the self awakener. And that's really bad for me. The Android 18 wasn't too bad because I could put back the Omega Shenron, but it meant that I have to then put back the Haze off of the Super Combo. 
and then I draw into the last two 1 cost 10k combos in the entire deck because I bottom decked the third 9 drops in Shenron and I believe the deck only runs 3 and I'd already used the Cell Xeno Secret Rare and those are the only 10k combos in the deck I think. So that was actually really unlucky on my part but I don't think it ended up mattering because he had the Bardock over Realm and I just reveal my hand and like that's GG um, I'm going to lose because he can restand his leader once more and he can also swing with the Bardock and I won't be able to outcombo both of those. So, onto the third game, um, and I just mulligan away uh, everything that isn't a super combo basically. Um, just a pretty good strategy to take against a Green Gohan deck is to mulligan away anything that isn't super combo or uh, negate or some kind of blocker. And I end up charging the one star ball and then using the ice shamrock and then just getting out a second one star ball. And my reasoning for that is because although there is a slight chance of having the last two one star balls in the drop, uh, not in the drop, in the life even, and so then whiffing on the ice shenron and losing out on a card, um, it's much less likely, uh, it's very very unlikely, and um, it's much better to just thin out the deck and um, increase your odds of seeing other cards throughout the game because you don't want to be drawing one star balls later down the line when you want to be um, seeing your big finishers and trying to kill them because one star ball in itself doesn't really apply any pressure. So he's just going with a standard opening of getting the Gohan down and swinging 15k crit which I opt to take because I don't want to combo two cards in uh, to stop their attack when I could just lose one card and lose the life. So he then swings with his leader and he opts to only take one life with this swing, which I found very odd at the time, um, because it kind of limits his turn to killing me capabilities. Um, but it it does kind of make some sort of sense because I think he was a little bit scared that I would go for a Cell Xeno line like I did in the last game and try and kill him during this turn, which is actually something I was um, looking to do here was just try and put him on really low life so that he can't use his leader effect or to just outright kill him but because I don't have the Salzino in hand that makes it a little bit harder I do have the 8 drop triple strike Omega Shenron um, but I don't really have anything to like play before it to fill up the drop area and get some more attacks in to put him down to 3 life and he'd probably have the hand advantage to out combo it anyway so here I go into the 4 drop Sin and evolve up to the 9 drop, and this is a really good play um, against Green Gohan because it stops the leader from attacking next turn, and because he um, took himself to 6 life um, and not 5, it's going to be a lot trickier for him to actually awaken this turn because he'd need a potential 3 self awakeners rather than just the 2 and he only has 2 energy, so he can't actually play down the 3 self awakeners this turn. Um, and that's the reason why I opted to swing at his Gohan for, with my leader, was so that I still get the leader top 5 search, but so that he has one less self awakener to swing with, and that would make it um, so much harder for his leader to actually awaken. And now that I have this 9 drops in Shenron down, I can also negate all of his skills uh, for the turn, um, that of any battle card that he plays, so any of his self awakeners have to actually wait an entire turn before they can use their effects. So that's the perfect play against uh, Green Gohan, is to just lock down their leader and then negate all of their skills, and I found that out during this game and I'm, um, it's actually a, was a very good lesson uh, to take from this game, was that the Sin Shen online is often the best against Green Gohan just because of how defensive it is. So here I feel like I kind of have free reign over the game because I've um, managed to stall another turn and stalling another turn against Green Gohan is like, the best thing you could do against them. So I'm swinging at his leader and I'm thinking maybe I can try and kill him this time because uh, the Sin Shen on aggro version um, has a lot of good uh, pressure, especially on turn 3. Turn 3 is generally where you want to try and kill them. But I don't get mm, very much off of the top 5 search of the Oceanus. 
so I opt to just take a 2 drop Oceanus to add to my defensive arsenal that I've slowly managed to build up uh, over the course of the 9 drops in Shenron and the last 2 turns. And so I just drop down a new wave of Shenron to revive Haze. Uh, this is mostly just to gain a little bit of card advantage um, and so that I have a good target for my Omega Shenron. And it also means that if I were to top deck Salzino, I could get rid of the Omega Shenron and the new wave of Shenron in order to sack off 12 for the successor cost. Um, so here I use Omega Shenron to warp Oceanus because it will give me another blocker during the next turn and it kills off his Self Awakener um, so that he can't even use the effect and he still needs to drop three, um, or he still needs to drop some Self Awakeners next turn because his leader effect won't uh, take him to three. Although actually that's not true because the Omega Shenron attack went through putting him to five life. So he can definitely awaken this turn. Um, and also I opted not to take the life with the Omega Shenron effect. Often in more mid-range or control matchups, uh, it's very good to take the life because you want to be self-awakening very quickly uh, against those kind of decks. But against Green Gohan, I figured it was better to just leave myself at higher life and try and defend out this turn because next turn with the Omega Shenron in hand, the Triple Striker, I can almost definitely kill him. Um, and so I effectively have four blockers here, one with Revenge and one with Barrier, because of the two Oceanus Shenrons in hand, and I'm also able to negate all of his skills that come down on his battle cards, which is the perfect setup against this deck. Um, he's really not able to do much in this kind of a scenario because my defense is so uh, powerful. And so he drops down a super combo and I just bottom deck a ball because the ball is not really useful. I have two super combos and two Oceanus for defense and then the Omega Shenron to kill him on the clapback. And he ends up dropping a hidden power Isukun Kai on his leader uh, and this takes me to three life. Um, this is actually a pretty good play because something he could have done was awaken and giving it, given his leader triple strike. But um, he wants to leave me at 3 life, not 2, and so that, that play would have given me an extra card. Um, whereas this play leaves me at 3, so I'm still in kill shot with his leader swing. Um, but I don't get the extra card that I would have gotten off with the triple strike attack. However, the downside of this play is it's a lot weaker to a defensive formation that I've set up like this where I have double Oceanus and double blocker down um, because he's only going to be able to kill me with the leader swings now and um, I can just let all of the other attacks go through and combo out of them and then try and block with the um, bat with the blockers on my board against his leader swings knowing that he can only kill me with his leader. So he ends up overrunning into the Bardock and swinging I believe at my leader um, and here I'm pretty unsure about, because I think I can let this go through, because I'm happy to get some card advantage, but I also want to be wary in case he has a second East Super Inkai, or Champa. So I end up just letting the attack go through, and then using the opportunity to awaken and gain some card advantage, um, and then he ends up not comboing on the attack, so I just drop a super combo to get out. Um, if he had comboed up onto the attack, I could have uh, for sure used a Haze Shenron Venomous Mist in my hand, um, because when I combo with it, I can choose an opponent's card in rest mode with, with greater cost than their energy, and then kill it by discarding another Shadow Dragon from my hand. Um, so if he'd comboed up onto the Bardock attack, because the Bardock cost 4 and he has 3 energy, I could have just killed it. So here he swings with his leader, and I opt to block with my barrier blocker. Um, this is partly because I want to keep the revenge blocker open in case he has some kind of battle card attack to gain some sort of value, but honestly I think this was a poor play on my part because um, he can potentially remove the uh, revenge blocker because it doesn't have barrier, and greeding for some kind of value in an aggro versus mid-range matchup is really not necessary because value is um, much more prominent and prevalent in control versus control matchups or control versus mid-range matchups because that is how you win those matchups but against aggro the game plan for the slower deck is just to survive and not worry about value often it's forfeiting value for survivability 
uh, and that's why you often combo cards because even though you're losing card advantage in an aggro matchup uh, if you combo your whole hand and survive it is definitely worth it because getting the extra turns is actually what matters in these matchups so i think that's the reasoning behind um why i thought that was a slight misplay on my part because the barrier is actually much more valuable than the revenge in this matchup um and that's just a little bit of card theory for you guys but um he ends up using the cells kamehameha to take out one of my oceanuses but i managed to get a third oceanus off of i believe it was a super combo draw um, that i got it off of so that was actually absolutely fine for me because i still have my effective four blockers um, because I still have two more Oceanus left in the hand. And so here he's dropping a one drop Dodoria um, just for any kind of Hail Mary uh, of a swing. Uh, and then he, I let it go through and he combos up to 15. Um, he doesn't end up using the effect of Dodoria um, to go for the double strike. I think he potentially. Oh no, he definitely wouldn't have wanted to do that because he hasn't even used his leader effect yet. Uh, to gain the triple strike, I don't think. Uh, he might have done, I might have missed that, but he hasn't got the counters on his leader, and he was really good at putting the counters on in the last two games. So from that, I'm assuming that he hasn't, and that's his reason behind not taking the life from the Dodoria. But it might also just be because he was trying to survive for the turn or something. Um, so here he passes turn, because he knows that there's no way he's getting through my uh, massive wall of blockers that I've managed to accumulate. And here, um, I'm just looking at my drop, looking at my hand, and I this is like for sure game. He's got two cards in hand and he's got two life, and I have a massive hand. I've got four energy to play with, and I can basically do whatever I want during this turn, and I'll still kill him. So I opt to bring out the Haze Shenron, and then just straight up warp seven from my drop uh, to bring out the Triple Striker Omega. And I even had another Haze Shenron, which uh, the double strike version, um, in my hand. And I might have had some in the drop to bring out the Omega Shenron that copies skills and then just give it double strike. So uh, he reveals his hand here at the end. And that's actually game to me. Um, so I managed to win the best of three in uh, against Green Gohan. Um, because all he had was a Feet Kamehameha and a Kai of Time which is a decent amount of combo power, but not enough when I have this many attacks coming through. So, um, I'd like to thank you all guys all for watching. Be sure to check out um, my opponent's Twitch in the description, and definitely check out my Twitch in the description as well. Um, I'll be doing almost um, daily streams from Monday to Friday at least. Um, pretty much streaming two hours a day from Monday to Thursday, I think, uh, if not more. So thank you guys all for watching, hope you enjoyed, definitely be sure to like the video if you did, and um, subscribe if you want to see more content, and I hope you guys have a great day.